welcome back to Hermitcraft. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Here we are again. I'm stopping by the shop. I'm getting better about that. Stopping by here to keep things in order and whatnot. I actually have some stock for this chest. Yeah. Seven stacks for a diamond. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I have to arrange this so that it makes some form of sense. There we go. Seven stacks for a diamond. Yeah. Okay. I need to get that restocked. Well, I'll be able to do it fairly soon-ish. I've been uh, doing some uh, mining, as a matter of fact. All right. That's restocked. How's the chicken holding out? Uh, yeah. Chicken's holding out just fine, and I'll have material for these chests fairly soon as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the steak. Oh, yeah. Oops, no, get up there. Yeah, six diamonds worth of steak. Great. Nothing going on there. Nothing going on here. There. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you know, I often complain about uh, modern Minecraft updates not putting in things that I find entirely useful or cool. And uh, a lot of times, updates having things in them that I don't particularly care for, like the... Uh, thing where you can't spam click with a sword anymore and so on but there is one modern minecraft change that i have found to be extremely cool concerning the ender chest the sound effect they've put on it that is totally freaking awesome i love that it is just so appropriate for the ender chest. Absolutely perfect. And, uh, I mean, I've found myself while in an AFK, an AFK or semi AFK, I suppose you could say, kind of situation. And, uh, just sit there opening and closing an ender chest because the sound is just so right for it. And I know that sounds weird. And I wonder why that sound cuts off like that. I don't know. That's weird. I did notice that, yes, the portal sound was another thing in some recent update that uh, the, the old portal sound continuing after transfer... like that the way it used to do long before and then for many versions it didn't do that yeah in any event onward all right you know recently as in in the last week or so it had occurred to me that it wouldn't be a bad idea to farm some nether wart but, uh, you know, I, I got thinking about that. And something occurred to me. There are farms for just about everything you can imagine around here. But, uh... The question is, I don't believe that I know about anyway, that I remember. I don't think there is any kind of a, uh, one of those over-the-top farms for netherwort. Okay, that does harvest it. All right. So, I'm thinking, this is all fine and dandy. 
and it will produce, I'm sure, plenty of netherwort, especially if you harvest it with a Fortune 3 tool. Because I've done some checking and some testing, and Fortune 3 does work on netherwort. So, yeah, there is that. But then there is the advantage of mechanization. And it's kind of occurred to me, maybe I want to try to build a netherwort farm. Perhaps a large one. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Like that. And then, uh, of course, on this side, we'd have a dozen more here, and a dozen more on that side, and so on. And the whole thing would stack. Because up from this, let's see. Yeah, you'd have another nether wart thing here, and another piston thing up here so on like that for however many levels and then all you need is a circuit that with the touch of a button fires all those pistons to harvest the nether wart and that would send it into a pit now I've seen designs kind of like this in the past where basically it was something like this And, well, no, wait a minute. No, not that wide. Not like that. It was three wide. Like this. And, uh, at this position, you'd be coming down a ladder, and you'd be able to reach each of these blocks, which would be slow sand, of course, soul sand, whatever. Uh, and, uh, by climbing down a ladder, you could reach each of these things to replant. And then, to harvest, at the bottom, you have a push button that, uh, activates the redstone circuit that goes level by level, firing pistons that are mounted behind each of these blocks. And it's level by level. The bottom level right at bedrock where I'm standing. The top level, way up there. I mean, we're talking maybe 60 levels of netherwort farm. You know, at nine blocks to a farm, 60 levels tall, that's a lot of netherwort. And if you wait until the whole thing is fully grown, which I believe is a couple or three Minecraft days for it to reach full growth, that's a lot of netherwort per harvest. Of course, then you need item collection and you need an item elevator, something that is uh, 1.10 or 1.11 or whatever friendly, because I know the old test elevator doesn't work anymore. And yeah, I'm thinking maybe I want to try to come up with something like that. And I've got a perfect place to build it. It'd be over in uh, Green District with the rest of the automatic farm type things. And so on. So, yeah, I'm thinking that might be a cool idea. That There's a lot of uh, stuff going on, a lot of things being farmed, but I haven't seen any major farming of netherwort. So maybe I want to try to work on something like that. Uh, in between my sessions of going back out to do lots and lots of mining, because I have been doing lots and lots of mining of late, and uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more mining. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll see more about that in an upcoming episode, part of which is already recorded, and so on. But in the meantime, onward yet again. Anyway. I did want to take this opportunity to say that I have to apologize for the 
extreme uber lateness of this video because this episode was actually supposed to air early Thursday afternoon and of course you're seeing this on Friday morning because I am not recording until Thursday evening isn't that wonderful uh, sometimes things happen the sudden upset stomach thing and all of that and well everybody knows throwing up is not fun and so I'm late but the pumpkin heads are right on time as they continue to explore they see what looks like a definitely built up area although the transition in the terrain is somewhat abrupt from wild mesa to manicured lawns and what looks to be streets but this makes them all the more curious so far they have seen a few very impressive structures and some gigantic what looks to be abandoned machines at least it looks like that to them but this is the first they've seen of the sign of an advanced civilization a city as it were complete with a map of the local surroundings which they take time to study in detail yeah this ginormous map of the local facility gives them something of an idea of how the place is laid out And they continue the exploration. And all manner of things. Oops. Even though some of the roads appear to dead end. White District Municipal. Yes. What appears to us to simply be a simple sign, a beacon, to them looks like some kind of a shrine. And we have an imposing, epic kind of structure here. where they're heading up here and exploring to check it out they don't see the throngs of crowds of people that you would expect in a gigantic place like this but nonetheless they are interested they are intrigued what appears to be a giant official presence of some kind it has even a legal kind of appearance to it but onward they move not deterred by the sounds of hostile creatures in the distance and they continue to explore all avenues and as they reach this point they see it 
clear sign that this place they have come to is not at all what they expected. It's not at all that, even a little bit. And having seen that, they have to investigate. And so, having seen this totally unexpected sight, they have to investigate. This is one of the more significant things, if not the most significant thing, they've seen since arriving through that strange glowing orange portal. They didn't expect this. They didn't even begin to expect it. And so, they move in mass to investigate. They approach the site and where otherwise they would have stopped or paused at least to send a few of their number to investigate pretty much everything they ran across along the way. Now, that's changed, and they've quickened their pace, because what they've seen has spiked their curiosity in a way nothing else could. And everything else has become unimportant in comparison. They must see this, and they must see it up close. And they're all equally curious about this. They pass by an epic structure. And anything else along the way. Because this is more important than anything they've seen so far. It changes everything. Ugh. Spider webs, cobwebs, whatever. They haven't ever, in all the worlds they've visited, in all the worlds they've conquered, and in fact quite destroyed. They've never yet encountered any race of beings that revered what they revere. And because of that, it changes the whole game. means that their attack plan must change. They are totally dumbfounded. Because the only place they've ever seen anything like this is in their world. Every other place they've been, they consider to be barbarians, animals, and basically non-sentient life, if they even considered it to be life at all. And therefore, they had no problem at all in uh, taking over. completely raping the place of all of its resources, natural and otherwise, and then moving on. 
like the race of unlikely conquerors they are, in fact. They never encountered anything like this in all their travels, in all the worlds they have destroyed, in all of the, what they consider to be subsentient species that they have enslaved and destroyed. Not one of them has ever displayed anything like this. Not a one. And so they've all been conquered and destroyed and their worlds left a deserted wasteland devoid of even the indication that there had once been life. In spite of how unlikely these guys look as conquerors, they apparently are quite renowned, or perhaps Infamous would be a better word. In the interdimensional community from which they hail. All of them finally come to this place hear the word from their leaders of what they found and they all have to see it for themselves this is unheard of this is completely unprecedented unimagined unthought of changes their plans considerably because this world this mesa was bound for the same fate as a thousand others in the past. To be conquered, to be exploited, and left destroyed. With no resources, with no life, with no hope, and no one even to remember that they used to be. But this is no longer the case. In their pilgrimage through the universe, their conquering ways it must change now. They cannot continue as they have been. And their victims, their would be victims, are now saved by the most incredible, most unlikeliest of things. Because imagine, if you were a conqueror, and in your conquering, you found a race that was unexpectedly just exactly like you. Even though they may not look the same. I mean, they're kind of gaunt and skinny. They kind of look like they really, really need a big Thanksgiving dinner or two. But, here they are. They've come to search and investigate. This is the prelude to the invasion. The evasion that will now not happen.
because they come to a place where their deity is revered as much as they do. And so Hermitcraft is saved and the Mesa is saved because after all, it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. <laughs>